for God. That's what I got to say. But anyway, without further ado, we got in the house. We got a special guest, man. We call him Doc Jones in the high E house, a.k.a. Travis Gluck. Gluckler? Sure. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, he, he said, sure. <laughs> oh, we got Travis, man. We got Doc Jones in the house. What's up, man? What's going on? Well, how you doing? How you doing, man? I'm uh, I'm good. I feel good to be here. Uh, good uh-huh. to be in the city. In the city. Yeah. That's important. This city. <laughs> well, man, I got to say, I know uh, Doc Jones, man, just from on the the Christian hip hop, holy hip hop, kingdom music, whatever you want to call it. But uh, he's on the scene, man, doing great things with his family. Yes. Uh, with his crew that he got and I, I figured you know we figured it'd be a good day today to have him on the show to talk about what he's working on and what he's doing and 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 man just tell us a little bit about yourself they call you doc jones um let's just take it from there all right well uh doc stands for dlc disciples of christ or disciple of christ mm-hmm. or disciples of christ whatever you want to say you know whatever yeah. you want to call it um i do uh I don't like to say that I'm a, go- I'm a gospel rapper, but for before that, I'm a missionary here in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a disciple. I'm a, you know, father. A father, a leader of my been. church. <laughs> All those things are, I think, you know, more important than, at least for me, the music. Mm-hmm. Uh, music is just something I do. It's a reflection of mm-hmm. my faith and and uh, what God is doing in me. A lot of times, it's more therapeutic for me. Yeah. And then I put it out, you know, for other people. And if you enjoy yeah. it, that's great. Yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah, I'm definitely, uh, you know, dedicated to the ministry first yeah. you know? and that's yeah. one thing that's important man um being a full-time missionary as you are like how did you hear that calling to say you know what god just god just called me or i mean how did all that jump <laughs> off um man i mean i grew up in a household where god was never mm-hmm. spoken about uh if anything if it was spoken about it was kind of more in a negative connotation mm-hmm. um and i didn't know jesus growing up at all you know mm-hmm. moved to las vegas five years ago mm-hmm. um was in the nightlife industry, mm-hmm. partying for basically party for a living. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I, I I feel like when God has a call on your life, mm-hmm. um, it, there's nothing you can do to escape that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's nothing that you can you can try and run as far as you want to go. It's like, <laughs> you you know, it's like a maze, and he's just moving walls around. He's like, yeah. no, you're gonna go here. Yeah, and all he's bringing you back. It. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how long have you been saved? Um, it'll be coming up on two years. I, well, you know, I, the whole save thing and surrender thing. Yeah. I say I surrendered my life to Christ um, December 15th of 2009. Okay. Whether I was saved before that, uh, who knows? Yeah. I yeah, forgot yeah. to know. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. No diggity, no doubt about that. So two years in the game with God, really serving him strong, um, being a full-time missionary, not having a job. That's kind of crazy, but that's yeah. ambitious, and that's what God calls you to do crazy things sometimes that people don't understand or they're not ready to do. So. Well, I was, I was telling somebody this just uh, last week, mm-hmm. um, that when I, when I gave my life, when I surrendered my life that, mm-hmm. that week, um, the week after, I, was, I had like uh, contracts with different nightclubs, yeah. and I would go and take pictures mm-hmm. in nightclubs, and... This big, the biggest contract, the one that that I had, the one mm-hmm. that I, I usually worked at, yeah, um, got ripped from me. Mm-hmm. So basically, it was like, okay, you're gonna surrender your life now. I'm gonna take everything that you thought was valuable away, away. from you, mm-hmm. and start it over. You know, yeah. and that, that was <laughs> looking back. Well, I remember the moment when it happened. I got the phone call, like you know, the contract's not gonna be renewed. This and mm-hmm. that. And I was like, all right, God, uh, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, you know? let's get it on. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Okay, okay. So um, you're involved in a lot of things uh, in this town that you do besides just, you know, rapping. Like you said, that's just something you do on the side. But there are some major things that you're doing in the city. And we want to talk about them today and really put it out there for the people to know that, you know, you're actually doing it for God and you want them to join in on the cause or or, or just even just be aware of what's going on. And the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the Sank City Project. Let's talk about that. What is the Saint City Project? Uh, Saint City Project is, I'd say, a, a five or depending on the day, five or six part ministry. Mm-hmm. There's all these different ministries that kind of make up the Saint City Project, and mm-hmm. it's all based on the scripture Romans five twenty, mm-hmm. uh, which is where sin abounds, grace abounds. Moreover, mm-hmm. um, and in a city like this, where um, you know we call it Sin City, which mm-hmm. you know the word sin means to be right a loser, yeah, to, to miss the mark, in <laughs> right, some way. right, right. You know, if you're shooting for the basket, you yeah. throw up air balls. 
Um, Break it. So in. how do we, you know, how do we, how do we name this city, this city after being a loser? Yeah. Um, and a lot of people don't think about it in that way, but mm-hmm. I think, you know, changing the whole uh, connotation, what you call something, mm-hmm. is kind of like what it will be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear what you're saying. How do you speak? The way you speak it is the way it's going to be. Like yeah. Say. You or is life and death in the tongue? In the, in the power of the thing, right? Yeah. So it's like. You know, we have to start changing the, the connotation of what this city stands for, what it represents. Mm-hmm. And I see, I see amazing things going on behind the scenes. You know, it's mm-hmm. not, you know, people come here from all over the world for this, you know, glamorous casino mm-hmm. uh, experience, and right. it's like, you know, a playground for adults and stuff like that. Right. But there's really just amazing people of God here mm-hmm. that I've, I've, I found. God put me in the city for a reason, mm-hmm. and um, it's just an honor to be here. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it's all him. He gave me the whole name and everything. Right. So. so what what goes on? Where is Saint City? Where does it take place? And what is actually the mission of, of the Saint City Project to do? Um, I think the ultimate mission of Saint City Project is to make disciples. Mm-hmm. Um, and all these different things that we do, Testimony Real, mm-hmm. uh, the Voltage Music, mm-hmm. uh, these outreaches we do at First Friday, mm-hmm. um, uh, any kind of concerts, any type of events, those are all important. Mm-hmm. But the ultimate goal, or I should say, the ultimate mission, is, is to create disciples. Is to make disciples and, right. and and pour into people. Right. So, what tools are you guys using at the Saint City Project to draw people in, or like, what do you? How do you guys get people to listen to what you have to say? Yeah, uh, one is through the music. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Icy Jones, mm-hmm. Jay Givens. Uh, Ray Younger, mm-hmm. uh, these are just a, a few artists that, you know, you can look out for mm-hmm. um, that are really, you know, doing it. doing some awesome things in this city mm-hmm. um, to let, you know, bring the gospel to people or bring gospel in a form that most people mm-hmm. aren't used to. Right. Um, the kids are like, man, this is cool. Like, yeah. I, never, I didn't think you could talk about Jesus and actually <laughs> be as real as this, you know, it's like, because we really lived, a, yeah. you know, a different lifestyle before and it's mm-hmm. not like... Um, at least I hope I'm not hypocritical. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So that's the Saint City Project. Uh, usually, you guys are at the first Fridays and everywhere else, and then uh, first, yeah, first Friday is actually really, really dope. Um, for the Christians who have never been to First Friday, mm-hmm. um, it's not a Christian event at all. If anything, it's a very um, demonic. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of stuff going on. It, if you've never been, it's wow. It's definitely a spiritual warfare type of thing. Mm-hmm. When you go down there, you can definitely feel the presence of evil. Um, everywhere around you, there's a lot of underage drinking and drugs mm-hmm. and uh, homosexuality. And, mm-hmm. and um, uh, In fact, just last month when I was down there, we, mm-hmm. we came across this guy who was... Um, uh, he had a sign that said, sell your soul for a candy bar or a mm-hmm. bottle of water. And people were actually signing contracts, uh, signing away their souls. And... and it, I don't know what that guy is into. For, I mean, for all you know, that he's really is is uh, you know uh, lifting up these contracts to to demons Satan or something, yeah. and and um, people don't, they just don't know. They think that it's it's fake, mm-hmm. or they think that um, it's just a candy it's bar. It's just for fun, <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that it's, I, I think uh, the first Fridays is a good opportunity for people to go, and that's where actually what I'm trying to say is that's where a believer should be. Is a place like oh, First yeah. Fridays to share to to be that light within the darkness. I think if Jesus, um, I mean, he's living inside us. But if he was actually walking the earth as he did, mm-hmm. he would be two thousand years ago. That's where he would be. He'd be chilling. That's where he would be. He was beyond uh, when he went with the tax collectors right in the middle of all that mess. Yeah, yeah but some yeah. people, like I tell you, man, some believers though, they just they talk it, but they don't want to live it. Because right. you tell someone to go down there and say, "Hey, let's go with me to First Fridays and let's go evangelize yeah. these people." And then they got all kind of excuses. I've had an experience with that um, w- one group. Um, they came down and performed one month, and the next month I had invited them back. Like, you know, it was a great hit. You guys brought a crowd, and mm-hmm. people really loved what you did. And um, they said uh, something to the extent of, you know, we, we can't be down there anymore. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 sometimes it's too much to sin, you know, maybe... Yeah. They, they're not ready. Yeah. yeah. Not everybody's ready. But that's where we should be. <laughs> exactly. Now, you mentioned something that's pretty cool, too, that you got going on. Testimony Real and the Sing City TV Project. They kind of go hand in hand. Let's talk about those two things. The, the testimonyreal.com. People can go there and see different testimonies. And and just let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, just to, just to plug the website, um, Saint City Project. 
dot com, you can get to all these other websites. So mm -hmm. anything that you want to find out more about the ministry and the different parts that we're going to uh, talk about mm -hmm. they're, they they're at the St. City. Go to stcityproject.com and mm -hmm. then all the other websites. So Testimony Real um, is like a video blogging website mm -hmm. where we interview uh, either random people on the street or people yeah. that I set up with like I did your interview at yeah. Town Square last week. That was cool though. Yeah. I like that. And I, I, I get people's <laughs> testimonies, how they've been changed by God. And they're mm -hmm. completely raw questions and just really, you know, kind of getting honest truth from people. Um, and we also interview mm -hmm. atheists and agnostics and people who grew up Muslim and, mm -hmm. and all just these the different... Just the whole gamut. Yeah, we don't want to keep it to just Christians because mm -hmm. then it's like one-sided. What does the rest of the world think? You know, mm -hmm. what are the opinions of people about Christians or right. about Jesus? Any of this stuff, it's really important, you know? Yeah. Brother Jay, got a question. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering, uh, who do you hope this all this will benefit? You know, what is their main goal? With the testimony real. With testimony real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, I was working on some, like, keywords and stuff like that, so it'll be fine, better in searches. And uh, a friend of mine, he told me, he put me onto this, that uh, something in Google, like 50,000 people a month search for my life sucks. Mm -hmm. Or um, I hate my life. I, I hate my life or really? I hate God or different mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like those are the people that I want to reach. I want to reach people that... Um, are mad are mm -hmm. people that are, are messed up and I want you know these stories of people's lives transforming um, to hopefully you know help people get plugged in or right. find some and, closure in whatever they're going through and it all goes back to creating disciples and yeah absolutely you know and, I, and, and, and speaking to that point you have another this guy's all over the place so <laughs> you have another thing you're working on and that is Disciples of Christ Project or just Disciples of Christ something that you do uh, where you're holding Bible studies yeah, and and let's talk about that. <laughs> you know, you got a lot of stuff going I know, on, bro. It's a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, this is really a, where my passion is is in disciples of Christ, mm -hmm. um, and I really just thank my pastor for for really putting me onto the strategy that we use to make mm -hmm. disciples, um, and it's completely biblical. It's called the Ephesians four twelve strategy, mm -hmm. and it's all about just building up the people of mm -hmm. the ministry to actually do the work of the church. And um, you know, when we when we look at church. Um, a lot of times, you know, it, it's 10% of the church that's doing all the work yeah. to make it run, yeah. right? Yeah. Where, where really it should be the opposite way around, where everybody mm -hmm. should be serving. And the only way to do that is to disciple them. Right. So um, we do these Bible studies mm -hmm. where they're, they're all held in public places. Mm -hmm. um, they're meant to outreach for people to invite. Mm -hmm. um, and, and through that, uh, we're getting a lot of people who have never read the Bible, people mm -hmm. who are um, really just new Christians, we meet people in public places and then they end up joining our Bible study. Okay. These kind of things. And, and um, it's just amazing to see what happens um, when, we, when you give people your time. I think it's the most valuable thing. Now, you mentioned something, too, about uh, when we met up earlier about the size of the groups and how often they change once you get to a certain size. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, the idea is to keep them small. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus discipled 12 people. Mm -hmm. And he spent the majority of his time even with three. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, I think you should always have a tight, really tight group of people that you're doing life with. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea with our group is that when the group gets to 10 or 12 people mm -hmm. consistently, you know, that's that can be a group, big group for a public place. Um, plus, outside of that, it starts to get less intimate. Mm -hmm. You know, the conversations, not everybody gets a chance to mm -hmm. answer and all those things. There's just too much going on. So at that point, you know, we're raising up leaders mm -hmm. through these groups. So at that point, there, there's, at, there should be another leader ready to take on a group. Mm -hmm. So we would multiply the group <clears throat> into two groups. Mm -hmm. And then they would grow and grow and multiply again over and over again. Mm -hmm. And through that, you're creating a body, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. that is is powerful and strong and mm -hmm. they're um, knowledgeable of the word. Right. They have accountability mm -hmm. to each other. And mm -hmm. um, so. So the, the point is to, <clears throat> like you said, get a small group. Once that group get, gets bigger, then you break them off into another group. So then, <clears throat> so are you empowering these people also to, to do works along with their faith to show God's love? Oh, absolutely. You know I mean? So, and I think that's like the next step process. It's still, I'm kind of early in this process. You okay. know, we, we've multiplied one group mm -hmm. and I just started another one. Mm -hmm. So like, there's still new groups. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the idea is that you know we're gonna start serving the community but like these people are still really young in their faith yeah too. so, so still it, you know still trying to get them fired up about christ mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. the point where you know they're like man we will expect with the holidays coming right um be able to do some really cool things right and you work with college students as well too right yeah unlv yeah. is is awesome we do these same small group ideas mm-hmm. at unlv mm-hmm. um and really trying to get uh some of these students on the same page of making right. disciples, and <laughs> I, I just think, I just want to say, like, I, I really believe that um, if you want to change anything in the world, whether mm-hmm. it be um, uh, world hunger mm-hmm. or uh, prostitution in, in the city mm-hmm. or child trafficking, any of those things, mm-hmm. um, we could do all these band aid solutions that'll uh, kind of help. We can send food and we can do all these things, mm-hmm. but if we're not making disciples and changing the world one person at a time, mm-hmm. nothing's going to really change. And we're talking like a whole total transformation right. change from like the yeah. mind to actions, right? Yeah, absolutely. You, I mean, that, I, in, in essence, that's how it should be. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Once we come to Christ, once we get changed, then everything should change. It should be a domino effect right? to where, you know, it starts in the mind, and then it goes to your actions, and then those actions will go out to, to reaching the other people. And then it becomes an, an infectious, or in the, this day and age, it becomes viral. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? To where everybody's well, God, doing it. God you know? knew what he was doing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think sometimes we send people out there to do work in these groups, and they have no idea of what they're doing. All they just know that someone put them there, and they're part of a group, and they're just doing whatever, but not knowing the reason why or the back and behind what they're doing. And what you're doing is, is great because they know what they're doing before they get out there and do it. Yeah. That's cool. If you guys just tuning in to the radio, uh, you're tuning to LFC Youth Radio. We got Doc Jones in the house, a full-time missionary, man's on fire for God. He has a lot of projects he's doing with, uh, again, a, a Saint City project. There's a Naked City, something he's, stuff he's doing at Na- Naked City Outreach. He got Testimony Real, and he also has Disciples of Christ, which is his baby that he's really holding on to. Do they um, know what Naked City is? <laughs> Let's talk about Naked City. What is Naked City? Well, we're kind of like, well, no, we're down the street from Naked City. We're down the street City. from Naked City. Um, Naked City is a neighborhood in Las Vegas behind the stratosphere between that and industrial. Mm-hmm. Um, Tam Drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the Stupac Center, which is a great right. community center yeah. over there. Um, and it's really, uh, it's a rough neighborhood. It's one of the, you know, when people who are familiar with naked city when they hear that or they hear the area <laughs> they're, they're like, like oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Naked city. we're not you know we're not going there at night time <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing um but there's an awesome ministry down there called casa de luz mm-hmm. and they've really just uh transformed this neighborhood mm-hmm. um from what from what i understand is that they used to get about 225 calls to metro monthly really and now that number is below 50 really so i mean how does that happen yeah. you know um, they give out uh, thousands of uh, pounds of food mm-hmm. weekly um, to homeless and people who are, are just needy. Yeah. You know, some people, are, they're not necessarily homeless, but they just don't have... The, the, they may have a job, but it's like a part-time deal. And, sure. And they're know, just making it, you know... Barely, they trying to scrounge up whatever they can. It's just awesome. And they, they do service there. In order for you to, you know, get food, you do have to listen to the word mm-hmm. to get that spiritual food. Right. And um, I just urge anybody out there... If you know, if you um, not to poke any uh, any sore spots, but like if you call yourself a Christian and you really want to get involved in something mm-hmm. that is uh, really making a difference in this city, mm-hmm. and you really want to mm-hmm. kind of face some spiritual warfare that's going on in this city, uh, go to Casa de Luz and mm-hmm. um, go see uh, Pastor Ryan or yeah. uh, uh, Pastor Ray Reader. Actually, he's <laughs> on this he's on this station uh-huh. uh, Fridays, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's man. That's what's up, man. God is everywhere. So, we got like a couple minutes left. Let's talk about Doc Jones, the rapper, the Christian, holy hip hop, kingdom music guy. Who is Doc Jones? <laughs> How did Doc Jones get started? Um, well, real, real quick, it's funny that the the name Doc Jones mm-hmm. was even my name because mm-hmm. I used to rap uh, back in New York mm-hmm. when I was in high school. Okay, and that w- that was my name. And it's crazy that I never knew what DLC really meant. Okay. Until I got saved, and now, mm-hmm. I, and I realized that it was disciples of Christ, um, which is amazing to me to think mm-hmm. that you know God has His hand on you from the beginning. Yeah, and He knows. It's just like, oh, he's here, here you are. Yeah, I'm Doc Jones, and you yeah. don't even know what you're doing <laughs> until you that day. Right. Then it's like, wait a minute, it still fits. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so Doc Jones, uh, I do gospel rap. I do spoken word music. Mm-hmm. I, I produce. Mm-hmm. Um, I do video production. I, I, I uh, produce a lot of my own videos and material mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, 
it's really like I said, it's just an outpouring of my soul. Right. It's, it's not necessary. Do I? I mean, is it going to blow up if God blesses it and I start, mm -hmm. you know, doing concerts and touring? That's great. Um, mm -hmm. But really, um, it's just it's just another tool that you have in your bag of tools to sure. help further the, the mission of God. And that's true because mm -hmm. when we see you at the Gorilla Cross events, I mean, everybody loved the you know do the Holy Ghost song. You know, they love it. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, we had some controversy over over that song yeah. and the connotation of of do the, the holy, holy ghost, ghost. and um I, I prayed about it and i i even kind of changed the words to get get the holy ghost and it, yeah. it, it's um we should because get the holy ghost it'll change your life you Man, know <laughs> that, that i love that i love it so can you spit a verse real quick before we get out of here we got like three minutes left you know a verse i don't know give you know, a couple samples of some okay. of your rhymes. Yeah, that's cool. Can I plug um, Saint plug, City real plug quick? Plug whatever you want to plug. Okay. Um, I am a full-time missionary here in Las Vegas. Um, I'm kind of making that transition now. Um, and if you feel in your heart that you want to give to our ministry or become a partner in any way, um, please go to saintcityproject.com uh, for more information. Contact me, whatever it is. Um, I'll buy you a coffee, whatever you want, and um, <laughs> we can talk about it, you know, yeah. chop it up. But, uh, yeah, I'll spit something, and you take it away from there. I'll take it away from there. Go okay, ahead, spit cool. a little something. You got two minutes. Um, <laughs> That's the whole song. No, I'm just joking. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it's just a verse. I'll All spit right. it. All right, spit a verse. So, uh, in the beginning, the first inner man living without sin into women desiring God's wisdom. Manipulated by sneaky tongues, a serpent one. Since then we run from God to murder his son. United in Christ we stand, only righteous man. Died to fulfill the plan, set free from all sin. He is benevolent, he promised our inheritance. The spirit guarantees that the kingdom is ahead of us. I used to be a money-hungry alcoholic pimp till I found Christ at 09. Good year, blimp. Oh yeah, life's a trip on a journey around the globe flying. Holy Spirit, first class, where? I don't no, I'm walking by faith only. The Lord, he will lead me. My seeing eye leading when I wonder. Stevie, allow me to speak freely and pray without ceasing. Just like Paul's teachings. Read it, Ephesians. Ooh, nice. <laughs> nice. A lot of knowledge yeah. just dropped there. Right? <laughs> stay, <laughs> stay in your Bibles, for real. <laughs> yeah, right. For real, though. All right, man. so uh, again, man, we got we got Travis in here, a.k.a. Doc Jones. Uh, you can email him at Travis at SexCityProject.com. Or you can hit him up on his celly cell or the phone number, uh, 702-375-6572. Again, that's area code 702-375-6572. Or email him at Travis at SanctCityProject.com. Please donate to the cause. Um, man, we got one minute left. You want to give any shout-outs to your peeps out there? Uh, Shout-out to Icy Jones. In the uh, house. Straight from, uh, straight from Heaven Clothing. Uh -huh. uh, whole Gorilla Cross, Quan. Everybody, doing his man. thing yeah um man there's just so many people in the city who are doing it twizzo uh actually uh, genesis got the album re album release party okay. for a concert tonight mm -hmm. um a whole bunch of things a whole apc my, my my church <laughs> I, I love y'all <laughs> hey, the people come see you at gorilla cross when yeah but we, we, yeah. Just, man, we, we out of time uh, we gotta I go know, we right. see y'all next yeah. week holla <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Living for Christ Radio. Yeah, Living I'm for Christ is located at 7,000. I'll tell you, man, the time be going by so fast.